You've got two questions. I have one answer for both. Mr. X, why would you buy another Batman statue? And why would you buy one of the worst Batman versions there is? Val Kilmer from Batman Forever? Really? Those are the two questions. The one answer is, the suit has nipples. Hey, my name is Mr. X. Welcome to the Extreme Channel. We are giving away $1,000 statues to you guys. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey, today we are reviewing the Prime One Studio one-third scale Batman Forever statue. So really excited about this piece. This reminds me of a restaurant that you go to that has a mediocre meal, but you go there for an amazing dessert. And then when you get the dessert, it's burnt. The reason I say that is I wanted this statue because I wanted this guy right here, the Batcave. This is the ultimate version. It comes with the Batcave. This is the cool part of the statue, but unfortunately it came burnt. It's broke to shit. We're going to come back to all that. The other reason I got this is I've been building a display of DCU one-third scale pieces. A lot are from Prime One, Queen Studios, J&D. I want to have every iteration of Batman, no matter how good they were, although this is arguably going to be one of the worst versions of him, although the statue is not too bad. So let me back you up. I currently have Christian Bale from Queen Studios. Also already own Batfleck in the tactical armor. Then very soon in the next month, I should be getting this Pattinson from Prime One Studio. And I have a custom Michael Keaton on order. Now, Prime One Studio, who made this, recently revealed a Michael Keaton as well. And that you could also get this in a different version. It came with the sonar suit that he wore at the very end. And also from this line, you could have bought the Robin. I think it was uh, O'Donnell, Christian O'Donnell, something like that. But this is the one I got, and I do have some issues with the statue, but I am glad he's in the collection. And the issues are not just the broke-to-shit base we're going to look at, but we're going to look at everything during the Extreme Review today. So Val Kilmer, a famous actor, who I mostly know him as Mad Mardigan from Willow. That was my favorite role of his. But he was obviously in Top Gun as well. Probably one of his other biggest roles, plus many others. Played Batman once. He's in this god-awful movie with some huge names. Jim Carrey was Riddler. Nicole Kidman was the love interest. Tommy Lee Jones was Two-Face. And to me, while there were some enjoyable moments in the movie, it almost feels like they couldn't decide. Is this going to be like comic base, Or are we going to make this hilarious? Is this going to be serious? It just was really all over the place. The writing was bad despite the character development. So, here he is. He's in the collection. We're going to put him with the rest. If you want to see what he looks like with the rest, check out the Extreme Channel social media. Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. The link is in the description below. But let's start the review. And as I said, this is kind of two pieces in one. The ultimate version comes with the Batcave, which for me is the statue to get for a few different reasons we're going to talk about. But first, let's look at the concept of Val Kilmer here, Batman. There's things I like and dislike about this. At the base, I really like the base with the one exception of the horrible nameplate. I don't need a nameplate in the front of it. And as you probably saw, there's another nameplate we're going to look at in a second. But not only is he in the Batcave, but it has the Bat symbol on the front and back. I really like this. It reminds me of the old Michael Keaton premium format from Sideshow, which I owned before I had a YouTube channel. You get the top, it's the metal grate like in the bat cave with still some rocks behind it. You saw the bats we passed by. Now he's walking down these steps. He's in a little bit of a funky pose. It looks strange. And I couldn't put my finger on it. Don't worry, I didn't put my finger on it. But I couldn't really realize what was weird about this statue until I have it in person. The pose is a little bit too weird. But that it's a standard museum pose besides his weird stepping off the stair. Few different switch outs in his right hand. He has that traditional suit. Now this is very similar to the Michael Keaton suit in the first few Batmans, other than the fact they added nipples, which nobody understood why, but they're there, and so we're gonna deal with them. And of course, the black belt, I believe, was the other difference, if I'm not mistaken. You move up, mixed media cape. Now, what's interesting is the I think the likeness is pretty good. We'll look at it during paint and sculpt, but he's looking off with his battering in the bat cave. That really doesn't make sense to me. Why does he have the battering out? And again, of course, you can switch it out. Like I hinted to, and we're going to look at the switch outs in a second. But it's pretty cool. Then the companion piece here, the Batcave. Also very cool. Has another stupid removable nameplate. It's actually a proximity piece, which is kind of neat that you can not display it. But uh, And I, I don't plan to display it because technically this suit 
could technically be with the Michael Keaton. So it's a bat cave. You have his cowl, part of his suit, and then you have all of his weapons right here. Now they slide into the wall. They're all made of metal, which is pretty cool. That's more of a design thing. But uh, it's kind of like this weird, it looks like felt, but it's not. It's very, very heavy. Both statues are very, very heavy. Again, more design stuff. But this is pretty cool as well. So concept, um, the pose kind of downplays it a little bit, but I do like it. I think it's a four out of five if you include the back cave here. Notice the new extreme scale we have from now on. Design, I'm going to bash the shit out of design partially because this was so destroyed. But before we do that, here is the unboxing and assembly. Two very heavy big boxes that might have contributed to the breakage. Did have an art box. Had different things on different sides. Standard Prime 1 foam. So the first box had two layers. The top was just the body and the cape. And then the bottom was the base and some of the other accessories. The other box was for the cave. So all the different pieces you can see right here. And then the huge cave on the bottom. And here's a preview to the break. We're going to look more at it in a second. Now, before I forget, let's get some dimensions. The back cave, the widest point is a little over 22 inches wide for exact dimensions. I got this from Comic Concepts. We're going to talk more about them later. Check out their website. It is 19 inches tall and then approximately eight and a half inches deep. He is very tall. He is 38 inches. Wow. And then about 19 wide and about 16 deep. So again, check out Comic Concepts for the exact dimensions. So, very, very heavy. The base itself, extremely heavy. And then this guy, the top is very, very heavy, which the metal pieces, they're not heavy, but they're metal, so they have some weight to them. The problem Prime 1 did is the base is hollow, so mine was bashed to shit. See all the different pictures here? It was shattered. I counted at least 30 different pieces, and there's still some on the inside. And when I set it down, it started cracking more. The crack actually starts here, goes all the way over here, then all that side is missing, and then it goes all the way in the back. So I think it's going to crack more and more. I've reached out to Comic Concepts. I'm sure they'll take care of me. So right immediately, you make a very top-heavy uh, piece with a hollow base to support it. Shame on you, Prime One. Horrible. Let's talk about the switch-outs because there's something I'm not a fan of. First, right here, you have a regular fist. Then he can be holding the Batarang, or he can have a type of grappling gun. I think that's what this is. Now, if you wanted to, you could remove some of this stuff from the wall. So, for example, I could move this Batarang, since he's holding one, to insinuate he took it. But I would never do that, because they all look really cool in there. Like I said, this could almost be the Batcave from Michael Keaton, despite some of these weapons were used in Batman Forever. But a big miss I think they have on the switch outs, this is the only portrait. Every Batman I've owned almost has always had an unmasked portrait. This is a movie piece. That would have been huge to have an unmasked Val Kilmer. Now, while I probably wouldn't display it, it's disappointing they didn't do it, especially knowing they did it 
with Michael Keaton. So I think that's another huge negative. The size. So the Batcave, I think it's, it's, it's huge, but I think it's sized appropriately. This is too tall. It's almost 40 inches. It's like, what the hell? Now the advantage to that is you could put it kind of behind some other pieces maybe. I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna display it. But overall, I think the design's a two out of five. I think it's definitely some misses for sure. And I know Comic Concepts will take care of me, but what if they don't have any more of this? It's essentially useless. And don't forget, this is why I bought it. I bought it for this. Paint and Sculpt. I do like it. I think they did a nice job. And this is where you're really gonna see the likeness. I'm pleasantly surprised. Take a look. So let's dive into both. Now I have some bright lights shining on this and this is a bat cave where typically the lighting isn't very good. And I'm gonna jump back and forth because it has a lot of similarities. So for example, the uh, cave. So you have the stalagmites on the bottom uh, pointing up. I think they did a nice job with this. I like the texture on it. I like the uh, gray and uh, different tones of gray. And you see that around the bottom of this base right here. So I think they did a really nice job with the actual rock or stone insinuating that it's a bat cave. I also really like the metallic parts. So what I would call the sub base down here, the rivets in it, uh, has a little bit of uh, copper around like where those screws and rivets are. And same thing, while I don't like the nameplate, it looks actually pretty cool in my opinion. Nice job on the uh, bat symbol here on front. The bats look okay. They're very large bats, which I kind of like. I think they're bigger than some of my other uh, comic base one-third scale have a brown hue to them and then even there's some brown on the bottom of the platform over here and then the top again has this brown copper tinge to it uh, looks exactly what you would think a bat cave is i like the fact they did the steps out of stone where i think the michael keaton one i was referring to earlier was actually out of uh uh, metal. So really quick, we'll look at the Batcave wall here. This looks great. Like I said, it almost looks like this, this felt material, but it's actually solid. These are all very high quality. Uh, everything from, uh, you have a bat bomb actually right down there. Small batarangs, some type of uh, saw, weird ass weapons. And I remember he had those, some handcuffs. I remember he had those, uh, a lot of weird weapons in this non-traditional um, more advanced, I would say. And then here's the cow. At first, I didn't like the fact that it's like on a black dummy, if you will. But I kind of like that, actually, the, the more I, I uh, focus on it. And again, this is very reminiscent of the Keaton suit. So technically, I put this behind Keaton, even though he didn't use some of those weapons. Batman himself, I really like. So a lot of folds in the boots. And I like how the boots look like a different type of leather, maybe thicker leather than the actual suit. And again, I have uh, some spotlights on here, so it's really shining off of it. It's typically not that shiny. There's a close-up for the nipples for you. But that traditional 89 icon, I remember that. I saw 89 uh, Keaton in the theaters. The gloves match the boots. Again, a little bit different shade of black, as well as a thicker material with some texture on it and some folds. The weapons are all very shiny, and I think that matches the suit. Then I like what they did with the belt. It's almost like this dull silver with uh, black capsules or uh, pouches. And the anatomy looks good too. He's not over muscularized. He's not under muscularized. Some of that bright light that's shining on it really makes it um, look shinier than it is. He has this traditional spikes on his gloves. The cape is actually a nice quality, probably pleather, probably not real leather, but it's pretty nice quality. And now let's get to the portrait. I definitely see uh, Kilmer. I think they did a great job with the eyes. Let me focus there for a second. Now granted, you know, when we talk about likeness, they only had to do his mouth and eyes. But the cow looks great too, on top of that. But you definitely see Kilmer in there. I think the likeness isn't 100%, but it's pretty damn close. There's no doubt who that is. So yeah, the paint sculpt, pleasantly surprised with overall. They did a nice job, which they usually do. Let's start with the paint. I think it's great. Like I said, I love the suit. I love the rocks. Uh, while it's a bunch of dark themes, I think it's still a solid four out of five on the paint. They did really nice. And I include the leather cape in that, or the pleather cape. Sculpt. I really can't find too many things to complain about. I think, again, it's a very nice job. It's movie accurate. 
It's a four out of five on the sculpt as well. I think Prime One did a nice job. All right, as statues have been increasing in price the last year, let's talk about the value. Is this worth it? So two versions, obviously, one like this and then one that comes with the Batcave. They made 150 of just the Batman and 350 like this, so 500 total. The one with just Val Kilmer here was $1,300. Everything together was $1,700. So you pay $500 for this right here. My math skills aren't that good today. You pay $400 for this right here. I think that's a good deal for this personally. Now, an interesting thing is while this is still available, the sonar suit, at least on Prime One's website, is sold out. It's The wait list is full too. So that one was highly sought after even though he only wore it at the end of the movie. Maybe because it's different and they made 200 of those and it retailed for $13.99. So I still think there's a following for this. I think a lot of people, especially since they made some companion pieces, if they made a Jim Carrey Riddler, then this would be highly sought after. But some people are doing what I'm doing. They want every iteration of Batman, so I think that's pretty cool, especially since you, you can get them all nowadays, other than George Clooney, who the fuck wants that. But still, it is pricey. I mean, this is $1,700 for all this. That is a uh, five-day, uh, well, not anymore, but a few years ago, that would have been a five-day all-inclusive retreat for my wife and I. Or I could get this broken, painted rock, kind of a no-brainer. So I think the value's fine. It's three out of five. Uh, again, he's a character that's not really highly sought after, but they didn't make too many of them, and it's done pretty well other than the horrible breakage. Maybe that's just mine. That's why I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt of three out of five. Now, I got mine from Comic Concepts because you get a little bit deal on the actual price, and the shipping is always cheaper through Comic Concepts. That's why I do it through them. Sometimes you get it a month or two later. Sometimes I've gotten it actually pretty early lately. I really encourage you guys to check them out, not only for Prime One Studio, but a bunch of other stuff. There's a link in the description below on where to buy statues. It's not an affiliate link, but go ahead and check them out for sure. Does he have the X Factor? Is he 5 out of 5? I do like him. I like him more than I thought I would. I uh, don't remember why I ordered him other than I was like, okay, I want every iteration of Batman. But I think he's a 4 out of 5 overall with the Batcave if it wasn't broken. So 4 out of 5 overall. I think Prime One did a nice job representing Val. I wonder what Val's short for. Valentine? Probably not even his real name. That's not very forthcoming. At least that's what Mr. X says. You should always use your real name. As we try to grow this channel, we like to reward you guys for watching and subscribing. So because of that, every 5,000 milestone when it comes to subscribers, we give away a couple thousand dollars worth of statues. We've actually given away over 20 statues. To win one is easy. First, you gotta be subscribed to the channel. You'll get bell notifications when videos drop. Each video that drops, you wanna make a comment on those videos. We pick a random video, we give away statues, based on a comment. You can say whatever you want. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Hey, thank you for tuning in, guys. Please drop a comment to enter the contest. We're getting closer. I would also appreciate a like and a subscribe. I know I'm asking a lot of you, but I have a $1,700 broken piece of rock. It would make me feel better.